Hey everybody, give me one second, I'm just trying to work out why my camera stopped working all of a sudden. And there we are. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another uh, one of mine, Pixelogic streams. I'm trying to stream more often, so you might see me around here uh, a bit more often. Good morning, good morning. It's morning here anyway. Can you guys hear me okay? Can you hear the music? Everything good? Welcome, welcome. Jazzy, how are you doing today? How are you doing today? All right, I think I am ready to go. Cat is here. He's also ready to go. Hey. He's decided to be um, inconvenient at the at the best time possible. There he is. So, uh, since we're getting started, let me introduce myself and what this project will be. Oh my god, excuse me, mister. So, <laughs> covered in cat hair. Please teach you brush daily. I wish I could, Chandan, but it's a little, a lot of work, right? A lot of time. I, I have so many other things to do. So, um... Okay, so my name is Anna Carolina. I've been streaming. <laughs> I've been. Oh my god, I have cat hair in my nose. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good start. Good start. Technical difficulties in cat hair. Um. <laughs> so, um, my name is Anna Carolina. I have been streaming with Pixelogic for a long time now, in my opinion, like years, maybe four years. Um. And right now, I am a college professor at the Ringling College of Art and Design. So I do teach every day, just not ZBrush and just not online. Um, I also have my own mentorship where I also teach every day. And um, I have this TikTok. <laughs> I always get weirded out talking about TikTok because, like, deep down, I still think, you know, like most people think of TikTok as that, like, dancing app, right? Um, but it's not really like some people dance on there, but like they also dance on YouTube and that doesn't make YouTube a dancing app Anyway, I digress. The point is is that I've been running this little series on TikTok called 3D cryptids for maybe like a year now just a few a few um, a few models here and there and It's gained enough popularity that I'm excited about doing some more, but I stopped. I've only done a few <laughs> Um, which means that I need to get back on it. And since some people might complain that I don't sculpt enough in my last stream, so I will do an entire model from scratch today to regain my honor. Bring honor to myself. Um, here's the cat too, so that's Sparkles, my little cat. Bye bye, to the bang. Great cat, so I'm gonna help. I'm gonna need your guys' help. Oh, I guess you can't see the, the image I'm trying to show you. There it is. Okay, so here I have some options. Baba Yaga, Mula Sin Cabeza, Green Man, Rake, Albatwitch, I... No, no. I think I already did this one and it was too gory for Zebra <laughs> for TikTok. Michigan Dog Man, Sasquatch I've already done. Gugway Face Eaters, Skunk Ape, Cthulhu, Pesta or Dragon, Jersey Devil. I've already done that one. Oh, no, wait. I think that's... Oh, no, this is the one I did that was too gory. With that tie and Siren Head. <laughs> so which one would you guys like to see today? Good morning, Adon. How you doing? John Dunn, stop complaining, please. Very rude of you. 
So they changed the, the snake hook um, hotkey. I'm going to change it back because I got used to SH. Give me one second. Started. Iron Head or Cthulhu? I like that Rakesh just came in here because I was thinking about the rake. One second, guys. Sorry. And to you too. The stream announcement woke me up. Will sem cabeça. John Dunn, I will ban you if you continue to be rude, okay? One more and you're banned, and you won't be able to watch Pixelogic again, which is a little... I wish there was like a timeout... Um, a timeout option for, for Facebook, but there isn't. It's only ban or nothing. What is the best way to make tables in ZBrush? Um... I'd say the, the insert curve brush tool, insert mesh curve. Maybe if you sorry because of the stem. <laughs> I think they were blocked, I'm not sure. Hi! Oh yeah, Alex, the bang. Okay, so let me, I'm between two, so we can do Siren Head or the Rake. So, Rake, Cryptid. Creepy. You're right, okay. Uh trigger warning, creepiness. So it's kind of like a like a little like ghost with long limbs, big mouth or something. Spooky. That's very spooky. I think I would be okay with making this. Or we can do siren head. Also a little spooky. But the rake is calling me, guys. I think I'm gonna do it. Gotta go with your guts. <laughs> Alright, let's make it. So I'm gonna start by kind of blocking out the head shape the way I normally do when I'm starting out humanoid characters. And this is where the face will go. This is the back of the head. Oh, pretty straightforward. The demonstration will be appreciated, so I might not have time to do that today, but if you want, you can request it from my YouTube channel and I'll put it there. Does the rake have a nose? It kind of just has like a skull sort of nose. We'll just add that on. It's kind of sketching at this point, having a good time. How are you guys doing today? Are you having a good time? What time is it where you're watching from? So this is where the mouth will go in the future. And there's a mouth. I don't think it has ears. Hello Hamza, how are you doing? It's 2 a.m. in Australia, oh my gosh. I have uh, this friend in Australia, and and we get to talk a lot whenever both of our sleep schedules are disrupted. <laughs> like when she's up in the morning, or I'm late, too late. Gorgeousness! It's eight fourteen a.m. in San Francisco. I woke up when the stream started. I also woke up when the stream started. <laughs> All right, we got how much of the body should I make? I don't think I should do the whole body. Maybe just the waist up. Let's go ahead and do these spheres. A pants. This sphere right there. Move it down. Whoop, wrong one. I gotta select. 
I never append things and then select them. It's just one of my flaws. Let's make sure that symmetry is turned on. Place it where the, the base of the neck would go. And then thicken out where the chest is gonna go. Oh my god. You make your brush smaller when you're using these spheres, it's actually easier to select just one at a time. Pro tip. <laughs> but kinda he's kinda got like a like a old and morty bad spine, so let's go for that. I'm just gonna throw in the pelvis right away. <laughs> okay, who here watched SpongeBob? Right? Did you guys ever watch that episode with the like little worm in the wheelchair? I think we're done here. <laughs> Lebanon 6.14 PM or AM? Oh, PM. O que vamos modelar hoje? É, se chama The Rake. E é tipo um monstrinho. Spongebob rules. <laughs> the rake slash Spongebob fan art. <laughs> I'm just going to throw some shoulders in. Worry about the chest later. I try to avoid it when my Z-spheres kind of go transparent like this, because normally it means there will be some sort of issue when you um, actually turn it into polygons. I know, I just like to keep them all properly see-through. Alright, let's add in elbows. What kind of pose should I put him in? Maybe just neutral for now. Some, somewhat neutral. Bad back neutral. Hey, my. <laughs> That's really cool that you use these spheres. I don't see too many artists using that method. Do you use it every time you sculpt or just for certain situations? Quicks, just for certain situations, actually. I switch between that and Dynamesh using primitives and a bunch of other things. Honestly, I do I do things different every time. Por que você gosta de usar these spheres? Okay. Posso responder em inglês para todo mundo saber? Uh, Iron Twitch, don't worry about it. The bot just thinks that whenever the bot sees em emotes, um, it just sees a string of letters, so it thinks you sent a string of letters a bunch of times. It's just the bots being dumb. Okay, Z spheres. So why did I choose to use Z spheres for this model? Okay, let's uh, let's observe it. Actually, the the image I was on was good already. Okay, because in this case we got kind of a long spindly body. And if I wasn't using these spheres, I would have to like mask, for example, let's say I was trying to make the upper arm, I would have to mask here and pull it and keep it totally straight, and it, it wouldn't be as um, efficient, in my opinion, as using the, just as these spheres which are already going to make like a nice straight armature, right? That's already very tubular, <laughs> I guess. Um, that's going to help me create this model. So in this particular case, I think that the these spheres are going to get us a long, a long way there as opposed to not you know because whenever i turn it oh, from these spheres it's already going to be like uh 70 percent done so to speak I'll go ahead and thicken out yes so i don't know what to do about the fingers though because you guys know me if you know me by now you know that i i am against <laughs> in my own life i am against um Making, let me go ahead and grab a pure rough board too. Um, I'm against making same the fingers one by one unless they're supposed to be different. If they're somewhat similar, I just like making one, copy and pasting it, and then calling it a day. I like it. I think it's efficient. Put this in there. Let's also put um, this one in there. I think that's good enough, right? Like, I think I can understand what's going on here from, from these two. This one's a little different.
Um, so I'll just make one finger and I will copy and paste it. So that's what we're gonna do today. <laughs> so let's go ahead and put the palm though in. Maybe I can do like the beginning of the pelvis. <laughs> Some drama right there. So before I go ahead and, and like start using this as my uh, kind of base, I'm actually gonna not have these be so separate because then they'll look weird. Um, I'm going to kind of round out some of the areas, so I'm going to press Q and add new Z spheres to just kind of flesh out some stuff. Do the same for the toes, yes. I need to wake myself up so I can work along. <laughs> I've actually been looking for tips on how to feel awake in the morning or like throughout the day. It has too big now, so let's go ahead and... I, I have this, like, not, not a theory, it's like not unheard of, you know, like, whenever we actually make something cute or childlike, we make the head bigger. Went through this at school uh, with my, my students, and if I make the head of the rake too big, then he'll maybe be more funny than creepy, and we don't want that snow. What's the proudest project you've worked on? That is such a hard question. Do you guys... Oh no, what's that? Okay. <clears throat> Do you guys ever realize that uh, the amount of pride you have over a project changes over time? Or is that just me? I'm gonna go ahead and hit my adaptive skin so that I can have the, the adaptive skin here. I'm gonna come back, hide the sub tool here, append and put in the adaptive skin. Uh, the cool thing about this is that we are going to keep the the, the Z sphere uh, subtool, although it's hidden, and then later we can use it to pose, like to rig and pose the uh, the model. This is me doing like a mantis pose. Woo. Um, 1020 at Conora Coronado Island. <laughs> um, what is that that you're creating? <laughs> Um, it's called the rake, and it's supposed to be a little creepy. Creepy. Can you explain depth max? Yes, sure. So, um, the depth mask is, uh, at least in ZBrush, what it does is, um, it creates kind of a render pass for your render, where it's basically traces the, the distance between each vertex or pixel, each pixel, from the camera. So each vertex on the piece from the camera. The closest thing to the camera is white, the farthest away thing from the camera is black, and then everything else is somewhere in between, depending on how close or far away it is. It creates a really cool um, layer you can use for Photoshop. Actually, I think I have it open here. Yeah, I have my latest Photoshop thing open here. I can show you real fast. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was rendering this piece. The depth mask, where is it? Right here. I'm gonna pull it all the way to the top. So that's literally all it does. This is this shoulder is closer to the camera, so it's white. That uh, veil is far away from the camera, so it's black. And what that does is it just lets you, for example, do different tricks to make the piece look more 3D, for example. Oi, oi, Alec, Alebec. Can you also create such environments with color and rendering? Is it possible in ZBrush? Yes, you can change, you can make environments in ZBrush. Uh, I'm here at ZBrush, so when should you do for the Dynamesh? Oh my gosh, so I'm gonna make a tutorial about this today on my YouTube channel, and speaking of which, I, I need like an assistant that posts my YouTube channel to the chat. Give me one second. Okay. 
Okay, we got a polygon situation here. Uh, let me go ahead and, and put my YouTube in chat. I've watched your videos on wings. Nice, Luke. So yeah, whenever to use Dynamesh, that's coming out today, actually. I recorded it on Thursday. I just After the stream, I'm going to finish editing it. And it's going to be my big YouTube comeback. I just launched, but I'm already coming back. Um, yes. Oh my god. Feet lower and then. Um, so, when to use Dynamesh? So, I use Dynamesh when, it, when it's time to block out the piece and assemble. That's what I'm calling it in the tutorial, like assembling time. For example, uh, when I'm putting in the toes, you know, you want to use Dynamesh for that. Um, and like blocking out. So right now I'm using Dynamesh because I'm I'm still in the early blockout phase, right? Um You give him the abs I always wanted. Um, and then switch to subdivisions once you're done assembling the piece. <laughs> the Dell situation on this model is... Okay, we're gonna fix it. It's okay. It's okay. Nothing wrong. <laughs> Why did I make the arms so far away from that? <laughs> what was I thinking earlier? <laughs> Nothing we can't fix. Can you rig in ZBrush? So you can do rigging with these spheres, it's just. Um, Personally, it's it's more for like speed sculpts or maybe like collectibles or something. Most people rig with other software, as far as I know. Ashley, oh my god, I was thinking about you these days. How have you been? Oi, sou seu fã número 1 aqui de Belo Horizonte, aparecendo mais uma das suas obras de arte. Obrigada, Renata, tudo bem? Hi, Daniel. Uh, so, Ana, you're the head of R&D of ZBrush, how I put... Am I? When did that happen? I was able to, I'd post it for you. Oh, thanks, Odon. My gosh, I'm, I'm literally rooting backwards in chat right now. I'm sorry for the missing. Oh my god. <laughs> I missed a lot of chat. Okay, projects are many, but always deadlines are never enough time. Hi, Anna. You doing anatomy study today? Uh, if so, can you share the reference, please? Fiction. Actually, I'm doing the rake. It's It's got anatomy, but it's more of like a creepy spirit than, than like an anatomy study. And I'm not using reference yet, I'm just winging it for now. What is your YouTube channel? So my YouTube channel link just got posted, but I'll post it again for those of you who missed it. How did you learn ZBrush? Uh, great question. So I learned ZBrush um, in college. I had a, uh, I went to the college for game art and design. And I, um, 
I hated 3D when I was there because I started off learning Max and things like that that just weren't for me. And then one day I try, uh, I had a, a class about character sculpting in, in ZBrush and I didn't even know what that was. And um, I, it was transformative, so to speak. Like I left the, the class, it was four hours long. I left the class and I was like, this is my new life. <laughs> this is who I am now. What do we got going on here? In that issue, creating more problems. Hashtag, it's just life sometimes. <laughs> um, so that's when I first got introduced to ZBrush. Uh, the class was short, and but it taught me a lot. And then I uh, took it upon myself to learn everything else. So I, I went on YouTube, and I learned as much as I could in ZBrush. There's way more resources now free resources now than there was in my time, so to speak. Um, like, I used to watch, for example, uh, just time lapses of people doing stuff and trying to figure out what the heck they, they were using, you know, what brushes were they using and things like that. Is it good to pose after sculpt, or do you sculpt combine with posing? So, Wilfred, great question. There's uh, multiple philosophies on this. I like to sculpt and then pose, unless it's just a study to push my sculpting skills, in which case you can pose first and then sculpt asymmetrically. Um, but most most effectively, most efficient way would be to um, sculpt and then pose. What pen do you use for modeling? Which brand and it model is it? Wacom. So uh, I'm right now using a Wacom Intuos tablet, but Wacom sent me a Cintiq, and I am about to start using it. So it's actually like tomorrow I'm installing it and using it. Oh, Ashley, thank you. Glad you think so. Have you ever done a self-portrait ZBrush sculpt? Yes, I have. Any thoughts on ZBrush joining Max? And nothing in particular. You know, like I, I I'm kind of aware that, you know, sales happen, change happens. Um, you know, uh, Miley Cyrus once said, nothing stays the same. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I'm like very curious about what the future holds, you know. Um, the people involved in the choice seem extremely excited about the choice. They're not doing it for like nefarious reasons. They're just like, they believe in it. They actually think it's a beneficial thing, and I've trusted them this far, so I'm gonna keep trusting them. Então, manda muito que está vendo essa live. Obrigada. Hi, papai. Doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. The beginning of the semester kicked my ass, but other than that, I'm good. What's your concepting process reference? Straight to ZBrush or do you sketch before? Depends on the complexity. Uh, depends on the complexity of my model and what I'm trying to create. So for this one, I'm just going to go straight to ZBrush because I honestly don't have time to concept. I'm just going to let my my intuition feel out what the model is going to end up looking like. The way I like to do my cryptids is that I don't like to make them too. I don't like to make them too like the same as the other concepts on Google. I like to make them a little different, unless I'm doing somebody's uh, original character, like when I did the um, when I did the Long Horse by Trevor Henderson. I kept it the same because just out of respect. Uh, but if it's like something like this, where it's kind of like a something that's been seen by people and nobody really knows what it looks like, then and I'll do it however I want. So right now I'm just going for the basic. Like I'm literally just putting in the, the skinniness and the bones and stuff. And then we will go from there. 
Vessel Pearl, it's good to see ya. Hello. Hello. And I'm fleshing out some, some the anatomy here. Is it Wacom you're using? Yes, it is Wacom. Interesting blackout so far. Thank you, Katri. What college did you say? So I teach at the Ringling College of Art and Design, but I went to the Art Institute. I don't know which one you're asking about. Use these here for all your work or just some work? It's just some. For this character, it made sense since it's long and spindly, right? It gave me really fast results, right? Are you sponsored by Wacom? Sort of. We're, we're still working out the details and stuff, but uh, yeah, kind of. Oh, in fact, in fact, uh, so I, I was supposed to start my stream last month, but I went through some stuff and I'm definitely starting in February. So next Sunday, not tomorrow, but next Sunday, I start streaming on my own channel again every Sunday doing ZBrush. And Wacom asked to sponsor giveaways on that channel. So like, guys, don't miss it, okay? <laughs> Don't miss the free Wacom tablets that I'm gonna be giving out on my on my channels next month. So, um, I'm putting all my links in there in case you guys wanna join my Discord, follow me on social media, um, work, get on my work mentorship and workshop and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be giving away free Wacom tablets next month. So please uh, come watch my Twitch stream for that. It's gonna be a challenge though, so you're gonna have to be sculpting too. Mm -hmm. I don't know, for some reason I can't see any videos in your YouTube channel. I can see your home page, but video page is empty. Weird. How strange. Uh, if you want to, go ahead and DM me like on Discord or something and then I'll, I'll, I'll look at it later. Is there a high demand for character designers like yourself in the industry? So a character designer and a character artist, I would consider that to be two slightly different things. A character artist would like bring, sometimes design, but mostly bring the characters to life in 3D. And then a designer would, um, would actually design them like a concept artist. Is there a high demand? Yes, there is a very high demand. But what you need to make sure that you know is that there's also a high competition because there's a lot of very talented people working in the fields, uh, looking for jobs, looking for freelance and stuff like that. So we actually have a pretty high competitive um, market right now. So even though there's a lot of um, search for it, there's also a lot, I guess there's a lot of demand, but there's also a lot of supply. I think a little bit of that like hanging skin. What do you guys think? Like the classical oh no. <laughs> Zebrush froze. <laughs> ah, I got excited about skin and then Zebrush froze and I haven't saved in a while. Go ahead and quick save now. Quick save gods, please. So this is not what I meant by hanging skin. This is just a bug. We need to see the unboxing of your new Wacom. Make a video for that too. Yeah, I'll make a TikTok. Maybe. We'll see how I'm feeling. What skin shade in ZBrush would you recommend that gets a SSS look and viewport while sculpting? So I have I don't. What's happening? It's like my move brush has become stuck. stuck. Okay, press escape a few times. I change brushes. Oh, oh, that actually looks like what I want. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Okay. So this might be a situation where, let me go ahead and press quick save again, just in case. I, I would hate to lose any of this work, but you know, it's been pretty fast so far, so I don't even mind that much. Um, okay, I might have to close ZBrush for a second here. Like I clicked something on my keyboard that made it freeze a bit. Let's take two. So I don't have any skin shaders to recommend right now. That's what I was trying to say before bad things happened. Okay. 
Okay. And they lost a little bit, but not a lot. Actually, not a lot at all. Hooray. Hooray! Okay. Alright, um... I couldn't even tell you what I, what I lost. I think just some dealt work or something. Like, not a big deal at all. But let's go ahead and add the skin flap now. A little strong. The only bad thing about, like... Well, I mean, unless you lose work, but... Um, if you don't, the only bad thing is that your brushes that you customize reset. <laughs> Go Ringling! <sighs> what time would you be streaming on Sundays next month? So, uh, I will stream at 5pm uh, Central. Are those giveaway worldwide? So, I have to get the details from Wacom, but I think so. I think she specifically said that they would be, but I still, again, I need to make total sure before I say anything legal, so to speak. But I think she said so. Spikes and blocks. <laughs> I'll be there if I can. How do you make skin pores and wrinkles? <laughs> um, so I personally like to use uh, texture XYZ alphas and, and channel maps and stuff like that. They just make such a good effect. Do you have to write code as a technical artist? So, um, depends on the exact kind of technical artist you are. I would say it's highly recommended to know how to write at least some sort of code or at least script. So there's a difference between programming and scripting. Um, and even just knowing how to script will get you a really long way. So basically like, um, for example, blueprinting in Unreal uh, or uh, the the node system in Houdini, for example, that that's that's pretty good thing to know. Um, but it depends on the kind of tech artist you are. I know tech artists that their only job is to, like document stuff on the website. So, mm -hmm. I I personally like I don't write code. I know I know a little Python, but I like, don't use it very much. Um, I just I just mostly write code in Unreal, like like by not by scripting, not writing code. And making procedural stuff. I really like like the effect of like pinching the bicep area here a little bit. I don't know, it's nice. I like that. Should we go back to the face a little bit? I say as I continue to ignore the face. What are you sculpting? It's called the the rake, and it's a monster from real life. Without knowing anatomy, it's very hard to do what you're doing now. Can see you know so much the tailbones and mass. Amazing. Thank you. Please comment. So, um, you just have to study. You just have to practice. You know, just keep practicing. Uh, one thing I suggested to one of my mentees recently is that like. Hey, by the way, like he was asking me how to study. What was a daily exercise to do? Okay, so like daily exercise. Um, and I and I go like you're not gonna like this, <laughs> but a really good daily exercise is to literally find what you're the weakest at, what you don't like sculpting, what is annoying to sculpt, what you don't like. Like like it could be jeans, it could be sleeves it could be a certain part of the arm find that thing 
that you don't like that you are not good at naturally and do that do that so many times that you get really freaking good at it and then once you're comfortable doing it and it's no longer a challenge find the next thing I'm kind of just like sketching in a little bit of the uh, scully look I want for him. I'm not going to be like 100% skull. Uh, actually, I think I'm inspired by the concept of mummies. I'm going to have to look up mummy references. I think mummies have noses. <laughs> huh. uh, does anybody know a mummy and could confirm? By any chance? Uh, <laughs> I would appreciate it. But like, I really like the way mummies have dried lips. You know? Um... From your side, which is hard to model? Stylized or realistic likeness? Um, both are hard. <laughs> They're all hard in their own way. And I talk about stylized stuff all the way, all the time with my students, because I teach in the VR department, and we're very constrained by limitations as far as like hardware and performance. And they're like, oh, uh, Anna, you don't have to worry about performance with me, because I'm doing stylized. Stylized is easy. Stylized is quick. <laughs> and it doesn't cost anything. As far as performance, and I'm like, oh, that's where you're wrong. <laughs> On all accounts. Good stylized is just as hard as good realistic, which is just as hard as everything else, honestly. How to study? Hopefully he wasn't in college. Uh, no, like, how to study a ZBrush and like, stuff like that. Reminds you of the gray aliens from a movie Fire in the Sky. I have not seen that movie. Actually, like, uh, the only movie with aliens I like is Avatar. Making eyes, I feel this is so tough to give expression. We'll 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 make eyes in a bit, but this particular monster has kind of like just glowing eyes, so you won't get the full eye experience today. But I have done it a thousand times on my streams before, in case you like after the stream want to go check out some other more realistic eyes. I wanted to start sculpting, but I don't know where to start of any kind. Can you help me with this, please? Hamza, okay. So first tell me why you want to start sculpting and what you want to make in the future. Once you are comfortable and good at it. Okay, let's look at mummies together. Okay, now I'll, I'll do it off screen because I, I don't want to like gore you guys out. So, uh, mummy face. <laughs> oh, I wrote mummy fate. Oh my gosh, this is like a movie fandom. <laughs> Images. <gasps> Okay, yeah, they did have noses. I have one that had to delete mesh like for the torn cloth effect. Oh, yeah. So I taught that in the um, in my YouTube already. Uh, you can just go check it out. Basically go to the video about wings and I'll show you how to delete part of the mesh like a torn cloth effect. What is your favorite thing to sculpt? Monsters, cute girls, animals. I have one doubt how to delete mesh or the one. Have you watched any good movies, shows lately? Any recommendations? Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I've been watching uh, Taskmaster uh, on YouTube um, whenever I eat dinner, and it's it's freaking great. It makes my day so much better. Uh, it's basically this like show where um, British comedians compete and they do like really dumb, unusual, and crazy tasks. And uh, it's it's amazing, ten out of ten. Like I I would I would I would only watch that if I could. Let's give him a big screech face. <laughs> okay. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and mask out kind of where I want the, the, the... Oh my god, what if I give him a creepy smile? <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Let's uh, give this a chance. I'm going to turn perspective off because it messes up your masking sometimes. So I'm going to invert and make it smaller. Push it in. Okay, that's not good, right? Okay, take two. And this is a pro tip that you'll learn from me, is that uh, prototyping is important. So what I mean here in pro by prototyping is like, do you quick changes if you don't know what you want to do next? And um, and do it, do it fast, as opposed to sinking a bunch of time into a change and realizing like two hours later that you don't like it. Just do it all fast and figure it out. You just look sad. Poor guy. Okay, let's make the mouth a normal human size, normal size mouth. I'm gonna take mask pen. <laughs> okay, that's more like it. I can live with that. Slash Young, nice to see you too. For proper topology and face, what do you recommend? Zero mesh guide, is it helpful? So zero mesh guides can can get you some some of the way, but it's best to do it by hand for, for proper control. And so I would recommend um, perhaps doing it with zero mesher. No, I'm sorry, Z modeler or something like that. But I do use zero mesh guides for like the, the sculpting process, not for the final though. <laughs> okay, let's let's do a pass. But he has like no top lip anymore. Poor guy, my poor my poor man here. Not have a good day. So what are the teeth like? It's just like crooked, creepy, <laughs> creepy crooked. We're going to need to add a little bit. So what, what, okay, I'm going to let you guys help me design this character. So what expression do we go for? Do we go for like threatening, coming at you? Do we go for like, I, I, I'm a monster and I wish I wasn't? <laughs> you know, that expression. <laughs> Once I had to sculpt a controversial thing. Oh my God. That's so controversial. Uh, Anna, that is great character studying. Maya Riggins, 3D Max, Unreal Engine, Houdini, and Fire, Fire Burst, PH. I don't know what that is. Read laser facial scans and AV Python. There's a lot of stuff to keep track of, and all have their pros and cons. Yeah, they do. Like, I, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but, like, in general, since I'm hearing a lot of names of software, it's like, yeah, I'm gonna be honest. Each one has their pros and cons and their uses. For proper topology on face, what do you recommend? I already read that one. How do you make hair, sculptor fiber mesh, or any other? So it depends on... Hair is a complicated topic for me because it totally depends on the um, on the goal, right? Like, why are you making hair? Is it for a game? Is it for a movie? Because those require different things. If it if it's just for a sculpt, like for... If it's for a 3D print, you're not going to use fiber mesh because that's not going to print properly. If it's just for a render, then fiber mesh is fine. Or if it's like for a movie, you, you could potentially use fiber mesh. But you don't want to use it for games because... Um, because it's too heavy. Each, each fiber is like multiple polygons and it's like all the round all the way around. And stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's really complicated. If it's just for a speed sculpt, I'll just sculpt it in. Like ordering a pizza without seeing pizza. Yes, that's master. Hey, what are you sculpting? So this is the rake. It's a cryptic, pr cryptid. <laughs> How much perspective? So earlier I just had a normal amount of perspective on the default, I think. 
Actually, no, I didn't because I, I had my ZBrush already open from before. So when it comes to perspective, just um, know that you need to know what the final product is. Oh my god, it's like my same answer, right, from last time. But like, know your pro target product. So if you're doing a, a game for the VR versus a game for the computer versus a game for the PlayStation versus a movie versus just a, a 3D print, you're going to need to know the perspective amounts or like the all of those uh, values from the final product and then apply it here because otherwise you'll get surprises when you put it in the final product. Um, if you're doing a likeness, for example, you're going to want to try to find out and, and get an eye for the perspectives of each camera type of like the reference. What would the animation be doing? So they won't be animated, but it'll be, it'll be, um, posed. Horrified creature type, little scary faces as if it's going to eat us now. Threatening face. Currently he's like, what? <laughs> scary face, definitely. Okay, so you guys want a scary face. Make him a nice monster. <laughs> Zombie's hungry and he saw you, so that's kind of threatening. Okay. Let's see how I can achieve that. So we gotta get the snarl in. I, I need some teeth in, I think, first before we continue. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and dynamash it up a little too. So, um, let's think this through. So let's put in some teeth. I wish I could just borrow some teeth from something around in here. Okay. Okay. I have teeth in this piece, so... Borrow it. I'm gonna select the teeth mesh. <laughs> and just append it. It's all like off-center and stuff, but it's good enough to block out some... literally just a block out. Oh my god, I keep pressing the wrong thing. Okay, this is a little block out, people. Please don't judge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and mirror it in the uh, the formation mirror on the... I never know which axis is up, to be honest. It seems like it's just such a, a relative thing, you know, for every software is a little different. Or maybe it's just Unreal that's different. Okay, that's going to kind of help me uh, work around situation. Anguish face, horrified, scared. <laughs> How to reset the position of an imported object in ZBrush to 000 if it's not the center? Um, <laughs> uh, so I think it's in here, like if you just go to the gizmo, one of these buttons is gonna do that, but I right now I can't tell you exactly which one. And I think you might have to like shift click it. Honestly, let's let's give this guy some some juicy lips. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to figure out what the heck I'm trying to do here. Beep, beep, beep. Kind of like that awkwardly large mouth. Is that a mistake? Find out in part two.
So my smooth is a little strong. I'm going to turn it down. And there's just kind of flattens everything else. What's this music? It's so amazing. So right now I'm just playing Pretzel Rocks. It's called Who We Are by Itro, Brandon, Mateos, and Archie. Who We Are. Hmm. Guys, make sure to follow me on social media to keep up to date with my latest content, free stuff, uh, announcements, schedule, artwork, all of that. I have a new YouTube channel where I've been putting little tutorials for ZBrush, so make sure to join uh, that. Go ahead and subscribe. You know, one of the things that makes my channel cool, in my opinion, is that I kind of get straight to the point, so uh, my videos are, like, short. <laughs> um, which I, I'm sure some people will appreciate. <laughs> it's certainly what I look for in a tutorial. Straight to the point, you know? Um... So the link is in there, and then I have a workshop and mentorship, so if you want to learn from me directly, please feel free to check it out, and message me if you have any questions. Oh, I forgot my Discord. <laughs> Last but not least, I have a Discord server where uh, hundreds of 3D artists of all walks of life and all over the industry hang out. We share tips and tricks, resources, you can show off your work, you can give people feedback, you can get feedback on your work and all sorts of other goodies. And it's also where the challenges will take place when I'm streaming and giving away Wacom tablets next month, so please do it. Um, they actually said that they, they want to give Wacom tablets away in my challenges for the next six months. So um, even if you don't win the first time, uh, you'll have more than one chance to win uh, over the next six months. So please feel free to join my Discord so you can keep up to date, my Instagram like everywhere, so that you can be um, notified of when it's wake up time. <laughs> While doing that, Amish, how do you turn off the features to fill the holes? I don't know what that means. Why are you not updating your art station? <laughs> Is your name Brazilian? Yes. Let's um, go ahead and put in the eyeballs, just to be able to get even a little closer to being able to um, get some expression in. I don't even know. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna work it out. Okay, so I'm going to go to brush, insert primitives, and I'm just gonna insert sphere. So it seems that on the other pictures, the eyes are pretty big. I'll just leave it like that. Uh, geometry, or I'm sorry, subtool split unmasked points will make the eyes their own subtool. There's actually a, a mat cap that I got some time ago that I can't find anymore. Um, where where I can be? Oh my god, what happened? Um, but I think it might go well with this particular model. What what, what was it called? 
I need to select a different one. I'm gonna go try to find this matcap. It's somewhere on my computer. <laughs> I don't know if it's working. I mean, it looks bad now, but it could look good once the subdivisions are up. We'll, we'll switch to it after. How do you merge two subtools and still be able to sculpt over it without them separating? Without them separating. You can, I, I personally, like, I can just merge two subtools and then sculpt over it, no problem. You don't separate. It doesn't separate normally. Unless you smooth it, in that case it will separate. Reminds me of my siren. Did you guys see my siren? <laughs> it's a very similar vibe right now. Big eyes, screamy face. <laughs> I'm messy at this point. I'm gonna start moving faster. Is it possible to make two sub tools into one mesh after merging? So when you smooth, there's some separation. Just dyna mesh them together or boolean, and then they'll join. But they'll be like really joined. Do you have Instagram? Yes, I do. There it is in chat. I need to have some procrastination. Ooh. Tips on procrastination. So, like, yes and no. Like, 
may I struggle with procrastination just like anybody else. Um, but, you know, um, one thing you have to know about procrastination is that it tends to be a self-sabotage mechanic. And it's based on resistance, not laziness. And normally resistance is something that's afraid of change or just doesn't want it at all. So if you think maybe like doing this thing will get you closer to your goals and your goals, getting closer to your goals means your life is going to change in some way or something's going to change, there's going to be a part of you that's going to be afraid of that change. Even it's way down, way down, low. Because change means unknown, right? And people fear what they don't know. And and so it's holding you back, creating resistance. If you're not scared of what doing that action will bring you, then you're less likely to procrastinate. But this stuff isn't isn't logical and it's not obvious either. Like it's subconscious, you know. You're gonna be like, I'm not scared of being a millionaire. Like, okay, maybe maybe you don't think that, but you probably like are. And you can look into why, you know. It could be a fear of failure too, like not just a fear of success, so it could be like you're too you're too scared of doing the action because maybe maybe you'll be bad at it and maybe it won't go the way you want it, so you you don't even want to try. Um it could be perfectionism. I don't know, just like try to try to work on on why you feel that way, I guess. What kind of video card are you using? What kind of tablet? So I have a an NVIDIA 3090 RTX and right now I'm using my Wacom Intuos tablet but I'm about to upgrade into a 16 inch Cintiq Pro. Have you ever played a VR horror game? Yes I have. Lots of them. For cloth texture with bump, what do you recommend? Try using the surface def or surface noise. It's nice. It works. Oops, I made a little hole in the thing. Okay, let's put the hands in. Kind of. So I guess the rake part is the hands. <laughs> I just realized it's like rakey hands. I think I got like long stabby fingers. Mm. Let's find out what I can do here. Maybe like a sear finger. I'm going to curve the hand a little bit to kind of get it ready to house the fingers. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and screenshot him up here too. Boop. Um, quick save, and then we're gonna pen that these here in. You guys hear sparkles choking? Poor guy. Poor little baby. Okay, a pen here again. Click on the Z sphere. Let's get it on the finger. Mm. 
I'm already gonna like pre-pose the finger a little bit. Um to kinda make it things easier <laughs> for myself. And adding the joints. And add an extra Z here just to add a little thickness to the tip of the finger. We're going to go to depth the skin, turn off Dynamesh, make it out of the skin, bring it in. The same thing we did earlier. And if you detail the finger out a little bit as necessary. kind of put in the little gap for the nail Are you doing full-time or are you doing freelance? Could you please tell me? Yeah, of course. So, um, I am full-time um, college professor and I do freelance and I have my own business. Did you place a screenshot? So you can take screenshots by pressing Shift S and ZBrush. And like wherever your mesh currently is, there will be a screenshots. But it's like a 3D sc screenshots. It's kind of cool. the fingers too long. The finger needs to be shorter so that the nail can be longer. No, even <laughs> I don't know what to do at this point. Okay, hear me out. I'm gonna just go ahead and add the nail in now. Worry about it later. Insert primitives. Take brush, mask, lasso, elongate this. Pointy. Okay. Maybe give it a little smooth. Um, w, let's go to the former and go ahead and create some nice clean curve to this nail. I 
Okay. I think that might be a little too curved. And then we're just going to get It got a little uh, askew, so to speak. So I'm going to take the move topological brush that lets me just move one at a time. The finger definitely needs to be shorter. Okay, so let's try to put them around. <laughs> little by little. It doesn't have to be perfect yet. That's going to be the ring finger. And do the index finger. The thumb's gonna be the trickiest one because you actually have to change the thumb up a pretty pretty good amount. Hey Carolina, any advice on how to get into the industry? How did you manage to get your first job? So I'm writing an entire book on this. So I have so much advice <laughs> on how to get into the industry. Um, like like it's so much advice. Um one sec, let me place the thumb, which is the hardest part. Um, how did I get my first job? So, sorry, I'm going to focus on this. Make the nail a little shorter. <laughs> Got a little bit of a curve going on. It's okay. It's okay. We'll fix that. When the timer is right, all will be right. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to go to polygroups and I'm going to auto groups. That way each finger and each nail has its own polygroup. And then I'm going to save. <laughs> Very important step. And then lastly, I'm going to mirror. So I'm going to go to geometry, modify topology, mirror and welds. There we go. We got start of hands. It's not perfect, but it's a start. So let's go ahead and, and fix the, the palm area. Okay, so how did I get to my first job? So it's a super complicated question, right? Um, because there are so many factors to me getting my first job. 
such as, for example, I, I, I cultivated a reputation for years before that because I, I was at school, you know, I was trying to impress people and things like that constantly or like do really good work and be known for my work ethic. So that's a huge foundation. I was also educating myself as much as possible and, and whatnot. Um, then the next thing is that I, my God, the song sucks. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, the next thing was that whenever I got out of college, you know, I had, like, I always tell the story of the visa thing that happened, like, you know, I needed to get a job really fast. Um, so I did some research and I decided that in order to, uh, have a bigger chance, I was going to actually completely change my, my focus. So I decided to become a technical artist instead of a character artist temporarily, so that I could just get a job, you know, get the experience, and then continue later from somewhere else. And then, um, because of my work ethic and like the the fact that I had done networking throughout college and that people knew my knew my work ethic and whatnot, um, it it was actually extremely easy. You know, as soon as I said I wanted to be a technical artist, somebody told somebody and told somebody told somebody, and then I didn't even have to apply anywhere. Uh, because I was just offered a job, basically. But it sounds easy, right? Like, oh, yeah, whatever, Carol's lucky she didn't have to apply anywhere to get her first job in the industry, but, like, not at all. I had been working for years at that point to establish myself as somebody you want to hire, you know, or somebody you want to somebody you want to promote or somebody you want to tr you trust to, like, give a recommendation to people, right? Um... And that's how I did it. <laughs> and that's what my book is about. Not just that, but like how to market yourself online, how to uh, network, how to create a reputation, how to make a really intelligent choices. <laughs> okay, so the silhouette of the neck this week, I don't know, I don't like it. Because there is no neck for one. <laughs> Maybe I should lengthen the neck. Maybe if I just put him in a three quarters, it'll be not good enough. <sighs> Use Unity or only Unreal? Only Unreal right now, but I've used Unity before, but not not a lot. <sighs> Yeah, and I'm facing some issues with polygroups and hoping you could help me with it. Let's see what the problem is. Basically, when I make a polygroup in, say, subdivision level 4, it looks clean, but if I slide down to subdivision level 1, and then again to level 4, the polygroups are all weird and jagged. Help. Okay, so uh, they're jagged because the, you don't have a proper loop in that area. You're probably just grabbing a bunch of little um, random polygons from that area. So what you're going to want to do is have clean topology and then make your polygroups in the lowest subdivision. Favorite movie and place to visit. Mine would be Avatar and Pandora at Disney. <laughs> my favorite movie. Uh, my favorite movie. I mean, like, Avatar is top 10. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Like, my favorite movies are movies that make me feel, um, something. I don't know. It's hard to say. Um,. I actually have a list somewhere of my favorite movies, but I don't remember everything right now. Too much context switching for one one poor human brain for me. Um,
Moving is still too intense. I think it's about talking about work ethic. I have been trying to explain that to younger artists and designers. Yeah? What does your book go for? So my book has no price because it's not done yet. In fact, um, I was hoping for a release this year. Am. I am hoping. <laughs> was makes it seem a little <laughs> bad. But, you know, I'm, I'm slowly doing the research for it. Writing in it little by little. I have a lot to do, so and it takes a while. But like the book, I am very passionate about the book because <laughs> the book is like um, a little bit of a um, uh, like a compilation of, of some of my strongest beliefs, you know, things like how to stand out in the industry, like wh what to do if you you feel powerless, like what what if you think what if you're like limiting yourself? Um, you know, um, I don't know, pick a topic, there's like probably a mention of it in the book. <laughs> I think follow quando alguém me pergunta o favorito. How to set the brush to work based on polygroup? I think if you go to auto masking in the brush, there's going to be an option there. You're awesome. Sounds like a great read. Planning a book tour as well? <laughs> I'm not planning a book tour. I mean, like, if anybody wanted me to book tour, I would book tour, but... It I don't know, maybe that's a limiting belief that I have to work through. Is that, like, I, I, I don't know if anybody would want me to book tour, but like, uh, I could go to colleges and talk about it. Hi, Rita! Rita, 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 Rita! How you doing today? Do you know any great online training? Yes. Feel free to visit my mentorship. <laughs> I'm also making a course sometime this year as well. I've already started. I have a lot of projects in the fire. No, oh, my meds so good. <laughs> Bye, Rita. Have fun at work. Miss your face, too. When the pandemic is slowing down, you need to come to Florida. <sighs> Still not happy with the face. I'm missing it. I think I'm, I'm trying too hard with the expression. I just need to give him like a neutral, like slightly, slightly like confusing one and it will be perfect. Go ahead and, and pick the paintbrush, switch to material and maybe paint it with a glowy material or something. I don't have a glowy material, but we have flat color. Or... That would be a good one. I should probably divide up the eyes. Get a better preview. That makes them look cute.
Nightcap Gorilla. I've never seen that one before. Oh, that's really creepy. <laughs> that's like next level creepy, right? What do you think about the display tablets, like and Tinkerfish sculpting? Uh, they're very nice. Like, you know, um, it's. I have a really unclear view on this because I like to just say, before you buy anything, try it out. You might like it, you might not like it. Don't spend a whole bunch of money <laughs> uh, without knowing first. So try to go somewhere that has that option, um, like the mall, <laughs> I guess, um, if you can. This looks really creepy. I like it, but the rake is supposed to be like white skinned, like like kind of like gray whites. I'm a lyric, but when I get in the office, I may be back in chat. <laughs> ah, how sneaky. Where are teachers in 3D? So I had a bunch of teachers in, in college. Um, there's so much I need to catch you up on. Oh my gosh. Sure. Can't wait. As a mentee of honest, I can highly recommend her courses. It's well worth it, folks. You can put in the work and time and get in the results are well worth it. Okay, thank you. Oh, go on. Um, oh, that one works. Let's paint that in. Okay, that works. We got like a... <laughs> we're faking it. Faking it till we make it here. So let's see. That's really cool. <laughs> Whoops, that is looks fucking fantastic though. How do I save a matcap? Does anybody know? Save. <laughs> Could it be the save button? Um, crazy colors. Sometimes I like to save my happy little accident. Okay, but we can't sculpt like this, so I'm gonna try to fix this now. Uh, I don't remember what I clicked to make it this way. Oh, saturation. Okay. So the rake is supposed to be like a gray, so we'll just paint it gray. Keep it simple. <laughs> RGB, I'm gonna choose this slightly. Color fill object is the best way to just fill the object. Color fill object, let's get the hands. Color fill object. And then for the teeth, we can do um, uh, as close to as wide as we can, I guess. Um, I don't know if it's going to color. <laughs> it's basically the same, so I'm going to do a yellowy white. Which I suppose is not white at all. Looks like surface of an oil spill. <laughs> Please tell me what music is playing. Um, right, this one's called Shadows by Zircon. Z I R C O N. If you like this music, just go to pretzelrocks.com. It's free. Um, and then put on the uh, EDM uh, playlist. EDM playlist. Unless you have to call it out and push your hand, of course. Do you guys think the pose is good enough yet? Mm. 
Okay, I think we can go up a subdivision and start detailing. I also think the nails need to be a little bigger. Should he have nipples? Important questions for character artists out there. I like to do like Damien Standard stabby bits, inverted, and just kind of like reinforce bones. Like that. I should probably look at Rip Cage reference actually, like, I'm not feeling too strongly about this particular setup we got going on here, but. Got no obliques. <laughs> okay, he's skinny, poor man. He just needs to eat the viewer, and then he'll feel better. Any or Audi? Make him more vascular? Does that mean like with veins and stuff? <laughs> Stylized no nips on boys working so far. No nipples, okay. We're not gonna do nipples then. For character artists, how many complete character pieces would you recommend to show your skill sets? Um, if you're, let's say you're just making, putting together your first portfolio, uh, I'd say like five. Three, th th the best you can, so like three to five, but like five is good. More is fine, as long as they're good. Hmm. How do you make the eyeballs glowing? So they're not actually glowing, it's just a matte cap called... I think it's Tri Shaders. This one right here, it just comes with ZBrush. I just tried a bunch of matte caps until I found one that worked. Iron Twitch, I don't know who that is, but I could Google it after. Maybe I do and like, I don't know, you know. Yes, with veins. Sure, we'll put veins in. I swear I had that shape when I was a teenager. <laughs> I believe it. I'm, I'm modeling this after one of my cousins, so... Whenever he was younger. Yeah, just in the environment, that means standard goes a long way to showcase some bone.
Wrong brush. <laughs> So I'm focusing on the front as you can tell, like we have stuff going on in the back, but since this is going to be a render for TikTok, like it's okay to focus on the front, but as you work on like a real professional piece, you know, it has to look good from every angle. That's one of the many challenges of 3D sculpting. No French life? I don't know. Um, there might be... I think there's some French people that make lives here, I just don't know what language they speak when they're live. Do you have a favorite video game? Yes. Witcher 3. But right now, the one I, I'm... This is my most favorite for playing now is Dead by Daylights. One of my creature, favorite creature artists. Uh, Zilong Zhu. Um... Maria Pongfilova. I, I don't know the names of everybody because like sometimes I'll follow them on Instagram or something and they'll be using a um, username like that doesn't have their name in it. It's like this one person that posts on there, I think, Galleria Anatom. That's really fucking good. I'm glad you like the fingers. Like, I did him on stream today, so one of the streams done, you can go back and watch the video and see how it was done. It was very easy. It was so easy. How about games coming out this year? Um, I haven't been like uh, thinking about them too much. <laughs> what about you do streams reviewing viewer sculpts? That would be really nice. So I do that sometimes, Cab Awesome, but on my own personal Twitch channel. Speaking of which, you guys can go follow that because I'm starting to stream again next Sunday. And I'm going to be doing giveaways and giving away some really cool gear. I'm going to be giving away Wacom tablets and free workshops with me. Cars? Do you prefer? I I don't care about cars, <laughs> at all. Like if there's one thing on this earth that I I couldn't even bother to think about, cars would be one of them. So what I want, like if I could have any car, I would have a self-driving car because then I would have even less involvement in cars. <laughs> okay, I just really don't care <laughs> about cars. Apparently that's a really big status symbol for some people. Cars. What car do you drive? You can dynamesh those hands in soon. Please put the link to your workshop. It's right there, but I'll put it in again. Why not? My wake and finally bit the dust last week, and I am not sad! Oh no! So you should join my, my competition so that you can get one for free.
anything you want to say for beginners like me? Any words? <laughs> um... Don't wait until you feel good enough to do stuff. Like, don't wait until you, your work is perfect to start posting it online. Don't wait to have every single qualification before you apply for a job. You know, like, sure, you don't want to be delusional either. But, um, just don't wait. You know, you never know. Self-rejection is a thing. I, I recommend in my book to, like, you know... Uh, have a social media presence and like market yourself online and one thing I always hear from my mentees and from everybody else is oh my god <laughs> is um, you know oh I'm not good enough uh, nobody's gonna follow me like that's not the point social media is a tool to make your career easier if you use it wisely right and um, you're never gonna be able to use it if you're not good enough yet you know whatever just do it and then you'll see that it actually doesn't even matter because people don't always just follow the best and the most incredible artists out there. People follow people who put up interesting things of value or that are vulnerable, right? People like vulnerability, things like that. So uh, something has happened to the hand. So I'm going to mirror uh, the formation, Igor. And then I'm going to Geometry, Modified Topology, Mirror and Weld. The reason I married before I married and Weld is because I, I've noticed that it um, prioritizes our left and it copies it over to the right as opposed to the other way around. I just wanted to get the good one on the, on the left. <sighs> the head is the, the main problem. <laughs> They could work on, like, a mouth or something. What's this? <laughs> it's the neck. Okay, goodbye, neck. I think being able to see see like the the throat of the thing makes it more more threatening because it's like Ugh, it's so close I can see it it's gonna eat me yeah. hmm. your work is so amazing thank you Hamza Luke Stark is great Harry Saber. I think I know who that is, and I'm not sure. Uh, it's so important to deal with imposter syndrome. Good old imposter syndrome. This is why I spent two and a half years to practice. I mean, you gotta practice anyway, even without imposter syndrome. One thing about imposter syndrome is that, one, everybody has it, right? Two, it doesn't mean it's true. Um, I'm reading a book right now called The Mountain Is You. Um, super fantastic like I highly recommend it for you if you want to stop sabotaging yourself like I can guarantee every person here does at least one or two methods of self-sabotage personally I do like 26 <laughs> and um, it all it all stems from different places different needs that need to be met different fears and things like that and um, Imposter syndrome is just that. It's a feeling and a thought and a belief that's in your head and literally nowhere else. And we need to be able to see, realize what our brains are doing, how we're thinking about things, and realize that we're not always right. In fact, we're normally wrong. We normally don't have enough information to even make a conclusion, right? But we, we figure it out. We extrapolate. We think, oh, they must hate me, whatever. They're going to figure out I'm a failure. That's not even accurate. You don't know what's going to happen. And like, if people hired you or if people said they like your work, it's for a reason, right? They're not dumb. I used to have imposter syndrome. And then one day I realized, dude, I, I, whenever I was at, at one of my jobs, right? I was like, oh my God, I'm a failure. I'm an imposter. They're going to find out I don't know anything, etc. <clears throat> and then I stopped to think one day and I was like, dude, 
they hired me. They give me money to be here. If I'm really an imposter, like I think I am, like, doesn't that make them wrong? Like, they thought I was good. They are paying me to do something. What makes them be wrong? Like, why are they wrong? Wouldn't they know? Like, wouldn't they see something in me that would make them want to hire me? That would make me want me around and want my help? Yes, <laughs> you know? Uh, because imposter syndrome is literally just illogical. And some are most of our problems and so internally. And once you can stop taking everything you think as truth and start questioning it, and question it, and question it, and keep questioning and dig down, right? Maybe you'll realize that it's not... It's not that you're an imposter, it's just that, like, um, you don't know everything. Is it a bad thing not to know everything? The, 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 did the other people you work with know everything? Like, is that realistic? Can one person know everything, right? Um, are your expectations and standards realistic? This is one thing, I, one huge thing I went through myself this month was like, Oh, whenever I dig into any of my problems, I realize that my expectations are and my standards are just way off, right? Whenever I, I think of other people I'm working with or um, like other people in the industry, I imagine like a idyllic, idealized scenario. Like they're perfect. They wake up. At a perfect time, they go to bed at the perfect time, they get a perfect amount of work done, they do it all without any mistakes, they have great lives, they have great networks, and I'm like, bro, <laughs> is that true though? Or is that just like me guessing and like get like putting them on a pedestal, right? I don't know, it's like a whole thing. Just take the leap. Do it scared, you know. So what if you're an imposter? <laughs> You're not, but like, let's say you embrace it. You're just like, whatever. Even if I'm an imposter, I'm here, I'm learning, I'm making money, like whatever. That's the goal, <laughs> right? Just just gain some control over our mental faculties is a really good thing. I agree with this as an amateur in ZBrush. I put stuff up on our station and even pros like my work. Exactly. Do you do sculpt reviews? Yes, so I do them on my channel every once in a while on Twitch. But if you want them from me, you can join my mentorship and I will like not just review your work, but like review your work like deeply. We'll talk about your strengths and weaknesses, what you need on your portfolio, what you need to do next, big picture stuff. I made a sculpt, but now hesitate to post it on our station because I can't pass my own quality control. Why don't you merge the fingers and the hands? I will. Computer specifications... Uh... <laughs> Lots of computer things in there. I don't have a computer. Uh, I used to have a command on my own personal channel that would show the computer specifications, but I, don't, I just, again, I'm not a big fan of hardware, cars, whatever. I know software really well, though. Does that count? <laughs> um. Okay, I'm starting to dig it a little more. Not perfect. <clears throat> Take my screenshot here so newbies can see kind of the big picture. So, what is it like sitting in your lecture hall taking a class from a professor? Um, you'd have to ask my students that. What was the name of the book? My book? Oh no, uh, The Mountain is You. You're your own toughest critic. <laughs> I'm, when dealing with imposter syndrome, just notice that people will look at you thinking they will be found out by you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're all just <laughs> thinking that we're this, the imposter. Once you work fixing codependency, then imposter syndrome will go away. What, what do you mean by that? Like, explain.
Fake it till you make it. <laughs> the mountain is you. Don't worry about hardware, dude. The brush is very nice. <laughs> What the idea can I hold this? Uh, Bonfamit. Oh my god, I love that username, like, ridiculously. I love it. Thank you so much, I'm glad you like it. Uh, will you do the textures? I will do poly paints. Thank you, Bonfamit. I'm glad you're inspired by all of this, um, uh, rib action. <laughs> no, yeah, thank you, though. Appreciate it. I don't take your guys' inspiration lightly. You know, um, everything I've been doing lately, like these past two weeks or so. Um, so let me, <laughs> let's go back further. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, I took the month of January and I decided that in the month of January, I had no career goals, no money goals, no art goals. The only thing I wanted was to um, heal Heal myself. Whatever is bothering me, heal it. Right? Whatever. Like, I didn't even have anything specific that I wanted to heal. I just wanted to dive deep into my mind, the inner workings, and find stuff that's holding me back. So that's my January. Right? January is just... I was just going to look inside and fix stuff. Dude, when I'm telling you, I literally, like three weeks ago, shed off a part of myself that was holding me back like like ridiculous like so good my biggest problem in my life like i was able to shed that just from taking one month and trying to work on myself like without worrying about money without worrying about fame without worrying, whatever whatever it is that people worry about no worries except for like like fixing myself or not fixing myself is also the wrong word because like you're not broken you know uh but okay anyway context so after that's I felt really light and I was like, oh my God, I can do anything. And then uh, the book, The Mountain is You and like the course, I'm taking, I'm taking a course and stuff like that. Everybody's like, hey, by the way, life is easier to live if you have a purpose. And I'm like, purpose, purpose, pur purpose, right? What is my purpose, right? So I've been, I've been kind of thinking about that <laughs> a little bit lately. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and while I'm while I'm talking about this, I'm gonna open up an old sculpt and steal the teeth. <laughs> we need better teeth, right? Um, I'm gonna go find it something else. Uh, anyway, so I've been thinking about my purpose a lot, and I can't decide if what it is at all. And honestly, like it can't be one thing, right? Like it can't be one thing. It's gotta be more than one thing, I guess. Cause it's too hard to pick one. It's gotta be something that feels right, but like, I, I realized, I was like, um, it feels really freaking good to, to be of service, um, to people that I, okay, <laughs> one second, I can't do this and search for files, where is it? Anyway. So, uh, I, I really like being a service because, you know, part of why I was always streaming was that... Okay, top teeth work. Not that. It's really frightening. Let's go ahead and fill with the material. Like, this is a whole new monster. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this, because I like it. And it kind of escapes from the rake, but... But I'll, I'll remember this for, like, a future... Future... Monster. I really like that. Um... Anyway. Or was I? Sorry guys. 
Sometimes when I stream, my brain just <laughs> stops working. IR Sculpt, I saw you in here. Right on time for um, my brain to melt. Okay. Now I can. I feel like I can focus a little bit. My purpose. So I, I, I had a really difficult time in college and as a beginner in the field of... I went into video games, game art, but animation, whatever, like, it is so freaking hard to be trying to break in. Do you guys agree? Those of you that broke in, like, do you remember how it was, right? Um, the self-doubt I had, the pressure I put on myself, the, the horrible things I did to my body in the process, right? Like, I always tell you guys, like, sleep, man, like, it, it will make or break your fucking IQ for the next five years if you spend a year without sleeping. Like, it did it to me, you know? Um, and it was so freaking hard, you know? And there's, like, the added stuff of, like, I'd go to conventions, GDC, whatever, like, show up as a little baby, you know? And, and, um, you know, get, get taken advantage of, right? By people who want you to work for free or people that want to sleep with you or whatever, you know, like... Um, it's so bad. It's so hard. And I felt so alone. The only people around me were the people who were also doing the same thing. So the only people around me were two people, or two types of people. One, other students and other beginners who were all really, um, they like basically give up or like feel really defeated. Or teachers that would help me but some of them would help me, but most of them, like, you know, hadn't gotten anywhere in the industry themselves, and they were also defeated. I came from a town where there wasn't a lot of games. So I wasn't in California, for example, where you could, like, meet a plethora of people. I was in a place where, honestly, the only people you met were also your enemies, because everybody was going for the same, like, three jobs, you know? And they would tear you down, talk shit about you, be your enemy, while pretending to be your friend. Um... There were so many abusers, people just take advantage of you, they'll, they'll make you work for hours and hours, they'll they'll pay you nothing, right? Like the first job I had, they paid me $100 an hour. And at the time, I thought, or not, a, not an hour, that's pretty good actually, $100 a month. <laughs> um, and like, I thought, oh my god, I'm so lucky, you know. <laughs> they pay for my gas, like... <laughs> So that's literally what they said. They're like, uh, here's for you to get here. Like, here's your gas money, you know? Um, and then I... Okay, that's, the details don't matter, but, like, it's so freaking hard. And so um, once I felt established and I started participating in these communities of normally, you know, like, not, not, not necessarily here, but, like, of beginners, teaching, workshops, and things like that, like, I just wanted to be the good... A good influence you know like someone that's maybe different than the experiences I had <laughs> and so I've kind of taken everything that I didn't like and I've corrected it the other way right so I, I don't tell people exactly what to do but like the world is black and white I let people make their own decisions I tell people how to take care of themselves stuff like that um... <sighs> let's go ahead and mirror these teeth <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so purpose-wise, um, I was kind of losing my power for a while there. I was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I'm tired, you know, I'm tired. And then I realized, but what if I'm making a good impact on the people who were me, you know, seven years ago, eight years ago? And then that made me feel a lot stronger. Um, and I think that's how your purpose is supposed to make you feel. Where's the error? But get rid of the subdivision levels. Okay. Then let's go ahead and I'm gonna take a look at my reference again, because I think the rake's supposed to have like gnarly, like very um, messed up, I guess, teeth. <laughs> I 
The fact that they're all sculpted together doesn't make this easy. <laughs> but you know what? I think I'm gonna just take off a peek from these. Here's Dynamesh. <laughs> the situation here, it's okay, we'll fix it. <laughs> there goes the teeth. The teeth that I worked so hard to like put back, I'm like, let's get rid of it. <laughs> The game biz is horrible if you let it be. <laughs> if you let it be. <laughs> I'm here to sleep part. I was a hot mess until I got a CPAP machine. McDonald's Blizzard, you don't stand up for yourself, then you'll get walked on. And I'm back. I restarted ZBrush and I'm, I'm glad again. Nice! Congrats! Welcome back! How do you export for VR, AR, and ZBrush? Just, um, just export as an FBX or an OBJ. Um, you're gonna have, probably have to um, put it in some other software like an Unity or something before you can see it in VR. I mean, in AR, honestly, you can just throw it in Procreate now. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> in, on the iPad? Completely agree. It's amazing artists like you that help the, make the journey better. As artists, people move up in the world and careers. Leaning, leaning a hand and teaching one another will only benefit reading the nonsense and chaos. Mm -hmm. Mountain View. No, the mountain is you. I'm going to type it up. Book. <laughs> The mountain is you. Play button. Um, to change the size. I don't know what that means, Tattoon. Can you reword your send your your question? Definitely reading that, thank you. Please do. I'm almost done with it. Also, never stay at a job that you don't jive with. I've walked away from great jobs because I refuse to deal with something that doesn't make me feel good. Well, like, um, you first, first, before you can do that, you have to feel like you have that option, right? And that's a whole thing on its own, right? Is feeling like you have the option to walk away from a job. Because you'll be safe and you'll be able to get other jobs, you know? Not everybody feels that way. And nobody, not everybody can pull that off. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this and then mirror it up and down. Let's see. Information. I think I might not finish this piece in time. Oh my god, the clock ticks. Go ahead and put everything together though. So we are at Dynamesh 88. Gonna go ahead and put all the things I want to Dynamesh together here at the bottom. So head, um, fingers, and nails. All day. 
I might want to keep the nails separate, otherwise it'll be a little messy, so let's go do that. I'm gonna go ahead and just mask either the nails or the fingers and then split on mask points and now they're separate. The nails are here. I'm gonna go ahead and dynamesh to merge down. Oh, it's okay. And the nails are separate. So now we kind of let's solo it and see if everything is here. Perfect. Let's dynamesh. That will combine all the pieces. Then we can kind of soften some transitions here. Actually, let's go higher. It's also a great chance, time to do a little quality control with your Dynamesh. Just in case. Sometimes things that you don't expect to stick together. Almost there. I think I'm gonna take a little break and color it before I keep sculpting. And then I, I always do this. I'm like, let's do this, and then I continue doing whatever I was already doing. <laughs> What type of project this is for? This is uh, for my TikTok. Do you know any way to configure hotkey setup button to change the brush size like in Photoshop? Okay, so you can just hold down space and then change the size. That's pretty good, right? I like this. And yeah, S just for this too, just for the draw size. Thank you, Divi Young. But I like doing space because then you get all these options. Maybe give it a little smooth in some areas where you can see too much brush strokes. Justin, I'm not sure if I do. I I don't think so. TikTok, no. Ok, esse meu amigo falava que no Brasil estudo o dia inteiro e porque lança quando chegava em casa. Ele também estava a fim de pedir para tatuagem e apareceu o convite para Finlândia. Ok, so Odon had asked us to do some veins. The way I like to do veins is like Damien Standard, and I kind of like this. Um, let me go find some reference for veins though. Uh, veiny man. What does a veiny man look like? Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, let's start with some hand veins. Oh wait, mm-mm, uh-uh, -mm. let's, let's start different way, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poly paint, just like I said I would like five minutes ago. 
and I'm going to paint the veins on with color on top of the poly paints. So for the poly paint, I'm going to go for a, I guess, <laughs> can I, a gray pink. I know this thing is supposed to be gray, but I want to go for like a gray pink. Be slightly pink, right? I don't know, I just think the pink is more off-putting than gray. Like, if a pink thing was chasing me, I'd be much, much more scared than if a gray thing was chasing me. Perfection. Then we can go ahead and choose a just darker version of this, but like pretty unsaturated for the, around the eyes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw on a, not that, um, throw on a mask, masking, and do peaks and valleys. Too much coverage. Create interesting color variation. Oh, actually, I need to invert. Too strong, too strong. Belly button. Color it in. It's like a grayish pink, right? Would you still read this as gray or pink? Then we can go for like a light pink. Gray for me, okay. It looks much more pink on my monitor than it does on my stream. I'm just gonna highlight. Pretty subtle, but we can turn up the, uh, the um, um, intensity of this in a bit. Gonna darken the um, knuckles.
O que é isso? Isso se chama Rake. É um dos scripteds pra minha. pra minha. pro TikTok. How did you eliminate the eyes? I just chose a matte cap that looked like it had light in it. The tri shaders matte cap. Focal length of your canvas right now. Like the default. Fifty-seven. Gonna add a little bit of blue. down the RGB intensity, put some blue where there will be load flowing through the veins. O cheiro do andamento do seu livro, ele tá indo. Eu, eu, eu dei uma reduzida na, no foco é, no, no ano novo, mas em breve eu vou voltar a fazer mais. And go to poly paints. Adjust color, see if there's anything I want to do. Adjust maybe like add more saturation. Oh my god, that's creepy as fuck. Wow. I'm also gonna take a screenshot of that. Put it with the other creepy thing. Okay, now we can do the veins. So I'm gonna turn it on RGB mode and turn it down. Do a few tests just to make sure. Oh. It's too strong, so let's turn it down. Very subtle. On the intensity. Nope, gotta turn it more up. It takes a while to get it right. In. Hannibal, how you doing? Love that roof case, thank you. Glad you like it. You get the eyes to look like this flat material, so it, it's not the flat material, it's the tri shaders material. Still trying to find arm vein references, everybody just takes references of the out, inside of the arms.
ends of the neck. Turn it down a bit by turning, reducing the After turn off perspective, how it looks like. Not very different. What render software do you use? Um, depends on the day and the render that I want. So it's going to be either um, ZBrush to Photoshop, Marmoset, or Unreal for me. Bump right here that I gotta get. I'm gonna go ahead and block that person that's spamming. Just focus on the face for a bit, and then we can pose it and render it out. Face is so neglected, poor thing. I make these kinds of monsters and faces all the time, and I'm realizing. Acquainted with the undead face <laughs> ever, ever more.
I'm gonna go ahead and, and then I mesh upwards because I need more resolution. Hi, Divian. And the Shivikala. Would you say you focus a lot on the silhouette when creating your characters? Yes. Is your uh, yeah? My username is the same on everything, so you'll be able to find me on TikTok by the same name, Anna Carolina Art. <laughs> is this stylized or more realistic look? This one's more stylized. What's this project for? My TikTok. If your silhouette doesn't look good, then no matter what, what the details will help. Let's go ahead and paint the inside of the nostril so we're not always staring at that hole. <laughs> I'm gonna start with the color of the inside of the mouth. Bit of blackness. Nice. Go ahead and create depth in the mouth here. Extra darkness. Contrast. Maybe I can do the nails kind of black too. I've like a gray, pinkish gray. Oh, cool, looks fun, thank you. Do you work at a studio at the moment? No, I work at a college. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you so much for seeing me, but seeing. Good day, Alexandre. That. My man's starting to look like he could be on the cover of a metal album, which is like actually a very nice genre of art, right? Like metal albums, love them. He's starting to get there. Okay, he's not looking so bad anymore. No more. Something about the top of the head. Or the bottom of the head. A any part of the head, really, at this point. <laughs> Anything helps. <laughs>
doing some worried lines, you know? You don't get to run around eating people without having a stressful thought or two. Put in the ears again. <laughs> point we lost the ears. <laughs> Thigmatic's a little tall, but whatever. At this point, <laughs> we're just trying to do a little bit last minute wrapping up before I start posing. I love teaching. It's a bit hard rushing there for my studio, but I'd love to do it again. Yeah, it's really nice. Well, things kind of like constricting a sentence in Japanese. Start with the larger issue details and progress into more details from there. Oh, nice. What language do you speak? English and Portuguese. Thank you, CGO Manny. How old are you? Uh, that's a sick one. Thanks for teaching us lots of new things. You're welcome. I'm glad you're here and learning. Difficult to make the tip of the fingers darker like for us by okay. I did make them a little darker, but now like that the nails are dark, you can barely tell. Actually I think I need to invert the nails, make them dark at the starts and then um, lighter at the tip, so let's do it. I gotta turn on symmetry first. Yes, darkness. Then take the nails, make the same color on them. Then lighten. What do you guys think? Like this or like the way it was before? I think I went too dark on the fingers. I just need to like highlight the nails, you know, like it's kind of the important part. Um, so it be like in your face, use some nails. <laughs> No, yeah, I think the frostbite idea is not working for me because it's kind of losing emphasis on that area a little too much for me. Studios you would like to work for? No. Like there are projects I would like to work for. Um, specifically right now, dinosaur documentaries. So if any of you guys know people who are making dinosaur documentaries and want a character artist, please send them my way. And it's for Lens. So. I'm curious how you would 
do decay on zombies. Oh, I've done one similar before. The this one, like she's all messed up because of the mat cap, but um, I did a little delay decay on the on the on on the final version of her. Can you see the character uh, gives personality? Yeah, they do, right? Quais são as suas principais diferenças no mercado de 3D? Como você busca inspiração para criar essas esculturas? Eu busco inspiração nas outras artes 3D, nos, nos filmes, games e também é, vida real e arte concept art. Animais e pessoas. Sim. Oh, there, thank you. Are you going to work on the back? I'd love to see how you work on the spine. So, hand toys, I, since I'm almost out of time, I'm not going to that much. Like, I just kind of blocked it in the back. Um, because I need to just do the front <laughs> at this point. At this point, somebody, something's gonna get done. Um, so, um, gonna quick save. Yeah, there's no time. But if I ever wanted to finish this, like for my portfolio or something, yeah, definitely work on the back. And then you'd probably see me working on it on my own Twitch channel. I can use the blob brush for something. Creating blobs. <laughs> No RGB though. And like make some creepy little blobs. The way to do it. I think raising the tongue would be good, I just don't think I'll have time for today. My favorite dinosaur? I don't have a favorite dinosaur, they're all nice. Oh, Don, you like the piece so much you want to see it done? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just projecting that actually, like, I like that you are excited for the finished piece. Okay, so in the posing, 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 posing. In order to pose, I'm going to duplicate this one. Um, solo out the new one. And I'm gonna zero mesh it. Because I, I like to pose with the lowest subdivision possible. Um, yeah, get or did. I don't even know why. Oh, it's symmetry's not even on. Honestly, okay. I'm just gonna get rid of this and just zero mesh it. <laughs> okay. Uh, zero mesh. 10,000 points. Projeto com gestor com penas é muito louco imaginar essa descoberta teoria. Sim, na verdade é uma descoberta, né? Nem tanto uma teoria. Could you show us again how you painted, like you did with the nails, use a special brush? I just used the paint brush. It's, it's really nice and it just paints stuff. <laughs> okay. Wow, then those got real, real dicey. Okay, so then I'm going to kind of hide everything. Turn solo off, kind of hide everything and turn on only the original and the new one. And then I'm going to select the new one and I'm going to project. Well, yes, for poly paints. Then I'm going to divide it up once or twice or three times. And then I'm going to keep projecting as we go up. 
And then I'm gonna check to see if, if... Okay, I need to go up one more. And project. <sighs> I'm always excited for the finished work. The process you take can get in there is always the best part, though. Uh. Você acha que as inspirações trazem mais personalidade ao trabalho de escultura? Ou você prefere trazer algo mais pessoal para o seu trabalho sem assim, essa necessidade de se referenciar? Eu sempre uso referência. É, é útil usar. I need some stuff I don't need anymore. Now that we're kind of back and now we have some divisions, but the thing looks mostly the same, I'm going to go to C first. <laughs> then I'm going to Z plugin, transpose master, T pose mesh. And then we can just pose from here. All right. So I want kind of a like a rat. <laughs> Uh, like, I'm gonna eat you vibe. Um, I kind of want to show off the body from a, a slight three quarters view, so I'm going to choose one of the sides that the thing's gonna be looking at. And then I'm going to make it look that way. So let's go ahead and switch to mask pen. Oh, never mind. Mask lasso. Often I can't. I had to have a slight angle like this to it. Oh, like this. Like that's better. Then claws out, right? The man's got claws here, so kind of <laughs> I should have looked up reference for this part too. I'm gonna put this arm back, create more some depth in the composition. <laughs> Make your mask soft, guys. Soft mask. Try to keep it above the pelvis because I'm gonna like crop out the pelvis situation, you know, after. <laughs> oh, wow. It's these moments that make life worth living, if you ask me. It's my favorite moment. Maybe this is what I'll use for TikTok. Woo, woo. <laughs> I might redo the pose, I don't know, I don't know if I'm I'm vibing with it yet. Uh, 
How hard to find a balance between the realism and stylized portion of posing. Like, this guy seems as if he wouldn't mind having choices that bit, bit a little too far. I mean, just try to think like your character would and, and pose that way. <laughs> Helicopter hands. What programs do you post? Do I post? <laughs> She's gonna animate the tongue like a lightsaber. Softening of the mask is really not doing favors to me. I'm gonna soften it less. later. We're gonna fix everything that I break. I tend not to be too... like careful with my posing, like sometimes shit happens, you know, you just fix it later, whatever. Especially for stuff like this. Of course, if it's a final, like, piece for a project, um, you want to be careful. Maybe if I turn up the, the perspective, the hand will be more menacing. <laughs> it's kind of quite the big hand. It's looking like a lobster or like a crab. Something. Like a crab in his hand. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Are you using a tablet? Yes, and it was from Wacom, but I'm about to switch to a Wacom Cintiq Pro. Como você faz para manter a simetria depois que o personagem, depois que posa o personagem? Um, ou você faz a, a pose num layer, ou você usa é, qual o nome? É, Posable Symmetry. I like the pose looks like it's reaching for it. Oh. <laughs> I read it, looks like it's reasoning with you, and I'm like, damn it, that's not what I was going for. <laughs> Let's see, okay. Let's see how this looks. I'm gonna go to C plugin, T pose sub T. I think if I bent the back fingers a little. Looks like he's rapping at me, and that's kind of threatening. <laughs> I kind of like this character. I didn't think I would, but... I don't know, I could finish this. 
some point. Okay, so I, it's 2 p.m. I have to go. I have a tutorial to finish in like 14 meetings today. Um, and a party because I host parties for my mentees and workshoppers. So like if you participate in my mentorship and workshop, you get to come to a party tonight. Yay. Um, anyway, that's not the point. The point is, is that I'm going to render this on my own later. And then stay tuned on my social media to see the video when it comes out, the TikTok video. So let me go ahead and share my links one last time just while I say goodbye. So well, make sure to follow me on social media um, for for uh, my tutorials, my content, my schedule, announcements, things like that. Follow me on Twitch, don't, don't forget. Because, again, next Sunday I start streaming on Twitch again. I am partnered with Wacom now and I will be giving out free Wacom tablets and Cintiqs every month for the next six months. So... You guys want to come to that and get your talents and participate in my challenges, all right? And I'm also going to be giving away free workshops at, at my workshop, too. Uh, and when you are at my workshop, you get to go to the party! <laughs> Yay! Uh, all right, so join that, but most importantly, join my Discord, because that's where the, the challenges take place and everything else takes place, okay? So it's where you'll get the best information. So let me put the Discord server in there. And uh, if you want to sign up or look into my workshop and mentorship, you want one-on-one -on -one help from me, you want me to um, sit with you, talk about your career, your goals, your strengths and weaknesses, what your portfolio looks like, what it needs to look like, uh, what your next steps are, what your plan is, come to my mentorship, all right, and I will give you personalized support. It's customized to each person. Some people want help with their resumes, sites, portfolios. Some people want help with, like, procrastination, discipline. Some people just want somebody to, like push them in the right direction or like force them to have deadlines. Some people want ZBrush lessons. Lessons, um, You can have it all. Just have my join my mentorship. And my workshop is every Wednesday we get together and I do a class and live demo with and we kind of create together portfolio pieces. We start from scratch at the beginning of the month and then we finish it and render it at the end of the month. So we get together every Wednesday and do that. It's very it's very different from the streams. Um, it's very different from the streams because it's more like a classroom environment. Like I will be on top of you. We will critique your work. Uh, it's like full on, like step by step. Learn. Let's talk about theory. Let's talk about uh, everything. <laughs> so feel free to join my mentorship. It's only fifty dollars a month. Like it's not that bad. Like for for like this amount of class time, you know. Um, and the support. And you get to come to my party and all these other things that you get to do. Like see my tutorials ahead of time. Whenever I finish them ahead of time. <laughs> anyway, guys. Thank you so much for watching the stream. Make sure to follow the Pixelogic channel to um, to um, keep up to date with amazing other artists like IRS Sculpts here. Um, and Sparkles wants to say goodbye. Say goodbye, Sparks. He's a little blurred out because the AI doesn't like him. He's like, you're going to spend the rest of Saturday with me? No, it's not. So I have like three meetings and the mixer and to finish stuff, but... Alrighty guys, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to follow me. Send me a DM if you need to, uh, me to answer any questions about the workshop or anything.